Okay, guys. Um, good workout last night. Got out there. What we needed. Need to get out there and get that one behind us. Get moved on to Maryland. Uh, I think we successfully did that. Uh, we're locked in. We have the opportunity to go down to, to College Park and play a, a good Maryland team, and, and we're looking forward to it. So, questions? This question from Tom Canavan, AP. Hey, Greg, I know you like to be prepared for everything, but for championship week, if you look at the standings, there are four teams with winning records and ten teams with two wins. How do you figure out who you're playing? Um, I have to be involved in that because I have to figure out, you know, we have to get some film broken down on teams. Um, but other than that, that's all you do is you look at it and try to figure out who can and you try to get some guidance from the league office. Uh, but that's the only reason I even concern myself with it is to get, get the breakdowns going. And we'll have to start that by Wednesday. So hopefully by Wednesday we'll have a better idea. If not, we may have to break down a couple teams, um, which will mean extra work for the coaches, but that's okay. Um, uh, my, my focus, though, uh, other than for the breakdown purposes, my focus is completely on Maryland, and uh, justifiably so. They have a good football team. The next question, Keith Sargent, NJ.com. Greg, how's the team doing for, uh, with the grind of the Big Ten? And eight weeks, eight, eight games in eight weeks has never been done before. Uh, you mentioned the bumps and bruises, but you know, mentally, physically, how's the team doing? Yeah, I think, you know, any of those situations would be in and of itself substantial. And then you throw the big one on top of it, COVID-19 and the ups and downs and the start stops and all the emotional and mental and physical tear that's had on them or wear rather, um, maybe tear as well. Um, I think, I think it's like everybody else in the country. I think it's had an effect. And I think those that are mentally the most tough, those that are, have the ability to stay focused on the task at hand are going to do the best down the stretch. And um, I don't know, you know, then the logical question would be, well, did you think that had an effect on us last week? Maybe. I don't know. Um, we didn't play well. So we have to do, you know, I thought we had a really good week of practice last week um, leading up to the game. So it wasn't that. So I think what we just need to do is lock in on on what we're doing this week, and again, that's you know, that's what our culture is bait, bit, you know, built on. Chop is just that. Focus on that spot, and you know, try to put the other stuff off to the side for now, and we'll get to it later. So that's that's literally what we're trying to do here. Chris Eisman, we'll get that. Hey Greg, what has stood out to you the most about the way that Tyquan Underwood has coached the receivers and kind of helped them develop, especially when it comes to a guy like Bo, who has obviously made a lot of strides this year? Probably what stands out the most is the the relationship that he has with his guys. You know how much he invests in them, and then I think in return, um, you know what you see how their play has improved. Uh, certainly you, you could talk about skill development. You could talk about mindset, all those things. But to me, it's the connection he has with his guys um, that I think is probably the lead thing that comes to mind. We're going to go to James Cratch, NJ.com. Greg, I know obviously you're focused on Maryland, but signing day is next week. How do you balance that? And how different do you think it, it, this is going to be given the fact that you haven't seen any of these kids since March. Yeah, it's definitely going to be different. Signing date in the middle of a game week is going to be different. Uh, there's, you know, but why wouldn't it be, right? It's 2020. Everything's different. So, uh, you know what? We're just going to, again, have a plan for that. You know, recruiting never stops. So, although I am focused on Maryland, part of my job and every coach on this staff's job is to continually recruit through the season. And, you know, recruiting is 365 days a year. So that's not unusual. What will be unusual is that signing date is in the middle of a game week. That'll be a little weird. But, uh, you know, you roll with it, and that's what we'll do. Uh, we, we really are excited about the class we're about to sign. It's, uh, what is it, nine days away right now. And, uh, you know, we gotta, we got to just push to the finish line, make sure that the guys that, uh, that we want in this class are, are part of this class. Going to go to Richie Schneider, right, with Rivals. 
Coach, how hard is it to prepare for uh, this Maryland team? They've already had three games canceled this season. I'm sure there's not a ton of film on this year's team already. Well, you're right. I mean, there's four four games, um, so that's what you go off of. You can look at last year, but I think they're you know every year is different. Every team's different, um, so it is what it is. You really you don't have a choice. That's what you go on. Um, but they've had some time to prepare, and who knows what they've changed. But we'll have to adjust on the fly. That's always the case, but it may be more the case this week, and, and we're prepared for that. A couple more questions. We'll go to Steve Politi, NJ.com. Greg, do you think you're more aggressive now on fourth downs than you were as a younger coach? And if so, is that a product of analytics, a product of being around Urban Meyer? Is there something that, that changed in the time that you were away? Um, I am more aggressive. It is a product of a lot of things. Uh, studying over the years that I was not a head coach. Um, I'm not going to get much more into it because I think the minute guys start to do that, you give away your thinking, which to me is a competitive advantage. But yeah, I mean, you don't have to be a genius to look at the number of times we've gone for it on fourth down um, to say that's a little bit different approach than the first go around. Yes. Patrick Moranin from the press of Atlantic city. Hi, Kush, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you, Patrick? Fine, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to ask if you can talk a little bit about Max Milton and, you know, his kind of development this year as a freshman and his impact, um, you know, and growing on the defense. Yeah, I, I am really impressed with Max. Um, uh, he's a freshman, so there's, you know, there's always the growing pains, right? Things that you take for granted maybe and you can't. But um, he's a really talented football player. He's very... Um, natural at the position so um he's been productive he's been productive on special teams and i think he has a very bright future um but the future's now for him i mean he's playing a lot of football he's he's in in a lot of situations so um i'm, I'm excited about about what he can do can't wait to to get him in uh, coach butler's weight program for a season as well uh you know that that he got a little taste of that but not not enough. We're going to go to Chris Nowalski with Rivals. Hey, Coach. Uh, going back to the uh, Maryland film and the and four games, um, you know, what have you seen from them on, on tape? Well, defensively, they're multiple, talented. They run around, uh, really can run. Uh, offensively, they have great skill. Um, I think, you know, they'll, they'll operate out of three and four wideout sets. And they should. They have really good wide receivers. Um, you know, the the one running back. They, they have a they have a stable of running backs, but the one running back I think is uh, the guy who's who's averaging now something like seven yards a carry. He's he's an elite player. Um, and I think the quarterback is dangerous. He's dangerous both with his arm and with his feet. I think um, you know when he when he went into the portal, uh, there was talk. You know, how good is he? Well, I can I can tell you, he's, he's real good. He's, uh, he's a good passer. He is a, uh, a very good with his feet. And it, it seems to me that he has a very good control of their offense after, you know, not a lot of time in the offense. Now, I know Coach, he, you know, Coach Locks and he had a relationship before at Alabama, so that may, may be part of it, that he, that he understands uh, where, where Coach is coming from. But uh, I think they're, it's a challenging team um, for sure, and we're going on the road, and there's going to be some, uh, you know, I'm getting informed daily. There's going to be some hurdles uh, in the travel and all that than, you know, our normal procedure just because some different uh, policies in the state of Maryland. So we're going to have to, we're going to have to adapt to that. And, uh, you know, football players and coaches are creatures of habit. So when you have to change their habit, you got to make sure you give, give plenty of heads up. You all right, Sarge? I lost you there for a minute. So you're checking out the ceiling. I worry is, you know, can't have, can't lose you now. We're almost home. Come on, baby. Let's go get there. We'll take our last question from Anthony Fusilli, Rutgers Radio Network. Uh, Greg, you, you and coach Frazier have, have coached a lot of special linebackers. What makes O three? 3 how has he taken it to another level, leading the country in tackles? What do you see about his game? Well, number one, and it's a mystery, right? He works really, really hard. 
at being a great football player. I mean, it's it, he's the guy who's here getting treatment on his body. He's the guy here who's studying film. He's the guy here that wants to meet extra with Coach Frazier. Um, you know, I, I always find it when you when you talk to people, there's usually one common denominator, and it's hard work. Right? But then on top of that, he's a gifted guy with talents, and uh, he's a very smart guy. So you throw that all into the cooker, and, and you have a really, really good linebacker. And I think he and Coach Frazier have had a great chemistry. Um, they're both smart guys that can really – they enjoy picking the game apart, and I think O3 has a good uh, anticipation. Part of that's natural, and the other part of it is is learned learned behavior. So, um, yeah, he's he's an elite player. He's worked himself into becoming an elite player. Thank you. Thanks for the time, Coach.